everyone, it's Miss Jones and welcome to our art lesson. This week, our project is inspired by Jacob Lawrence. Jacob Lawrence was an African-American artist whose work is known for its emphasis on storytelling. Born in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1917, Lawrence spent portions of his life both in Easton and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, before moving to Harlem in New York. Jacob's work focuses and portrays the lives and struggles of African-American heroes and heroines. His artwork has found a wide audience due to its abstract and colorful style, as well as the universality of the subject matter. For this project, we are going to create a storytelling piece similar to the subject matter found in Lawrence's work. So for our project today, um, we're going to be using some new materials that we haven't used yet. So I really hope that you came by the school and grabbed one of those art kits. So um, everyone in the school was given a wonderful art kit full of fun free stuff that we're going to be using in our art classes together. Um, if you didn't pick up your art kit yet, um, you can still come by the school. There are plenty available um, for everyone. Um, so if you haven't gotten it, come on by the school um, weekday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and um, these kits are right next to the front door so you just have to um, ask the front desk um, to grab one and they'll let you in and you can have your kit so um, make sure you come get your kit if you have it already um, if you don't have your kit while um, this for this project that's totally okay you can always skip the last step um, where we are using um, some new uh, materials there that you may not have. Don't worry, you can always skip it, it's no big deal. Um, but make sure you go get your kit so that we can um, move forward and you can um, have some of the same materials. So with that being said, um, what you're going to need is um, in your art kit you were given this um, packet of paper that says media paper and it says for watercolor. So we're going to be using some watercolor today. So go ahead and grab one of these pieces of media paper. Here's mine right here. And we're going to be using this. So we want to make sure we use the media paper because it soaks up the water really nice. So we're going to be using watercolors as well. So you should have your set of watercolors. It should have come with a paintbrush. Um, make sure you always put your paintbrush back in here so you don't lose it. Um, with your watercolors, I suggest that you um, have water because you're going to need water to activate it so i have a cup of water here i like to put it kind of up in the corner um with that i also like to have some paper towels available because sometimes um water can splash and get kind of messy and i like to blot my um my brush off to kind of get some paint extra paint off if i want to switch colors so i like having some um towels just so i can kind of blot that there um, also, if you like to mix colors, some people like to mix colors, you can either do that on like the tray top of your watercolor um, case, but I don't really like to do that because then it gets all dirty and um, covered in water and when you try and shut it, it just gets all over. So I have like a little dish or a lid um, that I'm going to use to mix my colors um, if I want to kind of check out what my color is going to look like. So if you want to have like a little dish or something, you might want to use that, but you can always use the case too. But this is just my personal preference. I like to do it kind of on a separate thing. Um, besides that, what you're going to need is a pencil. So you'll need a pencil for drawing, kind of sketching. And then also crayons, because crayons work really well with um, watercolor. They don't get covered up um, by them. They kind of um, repel water. So we're going to be using crayons today. So before we get at, um, started on painting, that's going to be our last step today. So I'm going to put my stuff off to the side. Um, painting is going to be our last total step. Um, and like I said, we're going to be creating a project that um, is a storytelling piece. So for this project, we're going to create a storytelling piece similar to the subject matter found in Lawrence's work. Um, most of his paintings included scenes of everyday life, but also historical events. And I don't know if you've looked outside lately, but there are a lot of historical things happening right now. Um, and I feel like every day in um, the year we're living in. 
So there's a lot of kind of options to choose from. So what we're going to think about first, before we start drawing, is we're gonna begin thinking about a, maybe a his, significant historical event that occurred sometimes during our lives. It could be in the past year, or it could be before. Um, maybe you've experienced something else that's happened. Um, I've definitely seen a lot in my um, years being alive, but maybe you can think of something else that um, was a significant historical event that has happened sometimes during your life. Um, another option is to think about something that has maybe influenced your family heritage. Like maybe it's a past historical event that happened maybe when you weren't alive, but happened maybe to um, some of your family members and really affected them. Um, I know that uh, I've talked to my parents and have learned that um, my ancestors came over from um, Germany at one point and that was kind of a big deal. So I could do something like that. These are all just suggestions. So think about a significant historical event that has happened during your life or maybe an event that has influenced your family heritage. Um, try and think of those things. If you totally run out of ideas, then we'll talk about it. Um, you can try and come up with something else, like um, um, like maybe something that happens in your everyday life. But let's try and start with a historical event and thinking about um, uh, how um, what's been happening maybe in the world um, beyond us. So we're gonna start out first by drawing our picture um, and then coloring it in. So our, like again, our paint is gonna be our last thing. So go ahead and grab your pencil and your media paper, and we're gonna start by drawing our significant event. Um, so again, this can be something um, really fun or maybe something more serious. Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, it can be something that's affected your family um, and your family heritage. So it can be a past event if you would like. Um, I. Uh, it could be something that's happened in our area. It could be something like a sporting event that's happened. Those are always historic. Um, so use your imagination and draw something that you um, feel connected to. So when I was thinking about what historic event, um, like I said, lots of stuff has been happening just in the past 15 months, maybe, um, uh, maybe even less than that, 10 months. Um, and I wanted to draw something related to that. So we've all been struggling with the coronavirus and there's been a lot of, um, you know, interesting things happening around that. And recently we've um, seen uh, COVID-19 vaccines come out. So I was going to draw the first person getting the vaccine because that was a historic moment. Um, so that's gonna be my, um, my drawing today. Um, you can, if you like that idea, you can always go off of that um, and do something related to coronavirus maybe, but um, this is the one I decided I was going to do. So I'm gonna draw my picture and then we'll come back after we're done and kind of head to the next step. All right, so I drew out my picture um, of my doctor giving um, the woman her first coronavirus shot. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're gonna color our picture. So our paint that we're gonna use is kind of just gonna be what's called a wash. So it's really gonna be our background, but we want our people to kind of um, stand out. And those people will stand out if we use crayons where our watercolor, it's very light. So it's kind of just gonna be like an accent to the background of our um, piece. So that's what we're gonna use the watercolor for. So let's go ahead and use our crayons to kind of fill in our um, picture and color that. And then we can do the background. Um, we kind of want to do the crayons first, um, but maybe we could also do the background first. Uh, I. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, but the water does repel off of the crayons, and I'm not really sure how well the crayons will go on top of the water, um, especially if it's wet. So um, I suggest that we start with our um, uh, crayons first and coloring our picture, and then go in with our watercolor. So I'm gonna um, start here. Um, if you want, you can also, um, you know, uh, go over things with pen if you'd like, um, but it has to be a Sharpie because uh, the watercolor will affect 
every other kind of pen. So it needs to be a Sharpie if you're gonna use uh, a pen to outline anything. So I'm using my Sharpie to outline a couple details um, just so that they uh, show up because um, some of them might not um, if I don't uh, kind of highlight them. All right, so after you get yours colored, um, we're gonna start our painting. So I went back and colored mine. I realized mine wasn't really saturated. I wanna make my crayon really super saturated because I want it to really stand out and be bright and bold. Use kind of these big flowing color lines and um, colors here. So I did went back and did that because um, I really want this to stand out against my paint. So what you're going to need now is you're going to need your paints here. Um, I'm gonna get my little tray to kind of mix on if I need to do that. Um, and then my water and my um, paper towel here. So kind of the key to watercolor because we haven't really done watercolor before. So the key to it is, I always say less is more. So if you want more color when you put it on the paper, you want more paint and less water. Okay, less water. I know it's called watercolor, but you really don't need that much water. Um, if you want it to be more, uh, more diluted and you want it to be a lighter color and not as bright, then you should use more water. But you really don't need much um, because we really don't want to soak our paper. Um, we kind of just want to put it on top of it so it soaks into the to the paper, but we don't want it to be like sopping wet where you can't pick it up anymore. 
Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, you can kind of choose what color you want to do for your background. Um, I'm looking here and I'm thinking back to our colors we talked about. I have lots of blue in here. Um, and also some brown because my um, people have that sort of skin tone. So I really want those to stand out. So since I have a lot of bl blue, I could maybe use orange as a background because orange is complement to blue. Um, so I'll probably stay away from my blue and green because these are kind of bluish greens. Um, I could maybe do red, but I don't know if I really am into that. Yellow might be a good one as well. Um, I might do yellow because I think orange is pretty similar to the eye colors. So I'm thinking yellow might be my best bet. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush and dip it in my water, just swish it around a little bit. And then I'm going to start kind of dabbing into my paints. So it might take a little bit to kind of activate the paint here. You might have to kind of uh, rub a lot of water in there. Um, and I like to rub it on my little dish to see if I actually have some paint on there. So it looks like I am getting some paint. I'm gonna swish my brush around and again, dip it in the watercolor palette and kind of try and get it. lots of paint there. You might have to do this a few times where you dip a lot of paint in there, uh, water in there. We kind of want to activate it, like I said, so you kind of have to wish it around in there a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna do it one more time, try and get a bunch of water in there. Just because I want to get a lot of the paint. Um, so now I think, okay, I've got my water here. And that yellow, I'm not a big fan of it. I think I want to add some orange in there because I don't really like this yellow. So I'm going to swish around my brush to grab a new color. So I don't want to get my yellow in my orange uh, paint uh, spot there. So I'm going to make sure it's all clean. So that's where I like to kind of pat dry my... Um, brush there and see that there's no other color in there anymore. So there's no yellow. So I can, again, start to add water to my orange maybe, and maybe kind of start mixing that. That looks pretty good. I want it to be like a yellow orange more. So I'm gonna, again, add some to my orange, put my orange there, good. And if I want to switch color, because I'm mixing my color, I'm gonna want to get, I'm gonna have to create this as like my palette. So I'm gonna need a lot of water here and a lot more paint um, in here and pigment. So I'm gonna go back to my yellow because I want to be mostly yellow orange. So I'm gonna keep dabbing in my yellow there and kind of bringing it over here. Getting a little bit more water. Just trying to kind of grab that pigment and paint and then put it over here. And then I want some more orange, so I'm gonna come over here, put my orange in, there we go. Kinda of gonna mix that up. So now I've got my kind of nice, beautiful color that I wanted. And then I'm going to apply that to my painting. So we're just doing the background, so I'm gonna just kind of start using my brush to kind of go over. Now, you might want a little bit more water just so it flows a little bit easier. Um, if you feel like you're not covering very much of your page, you can always get more water. And be careful because um, the paint will get on your um, desk here and it paint. this paint comes off, so don't worry. It definitely comes off. It's not gonna be an issue. Um, for you, it comes off of the desk really well. But if you wanna put down like a piece of paper so that you don't have to clean off your desk, you can just um, toss that piece of paper, that might be a good idea. So I'm just trying to keep adding some water, adding my color. You can see how it's pretty light here um, as we um, add it. So if you really want more, uh, less of a wash like this and more color, you're gonna have to keep adding uh, pigment. So you're going to have to keep dipping into your um, color, colors and paints there. Um, so that looks pretty good. So I can come back and maybe mix it a little bit more. I like mixing my colors. You can always go just straight from the color from here, but I like to mix it just to come up with kind of a new tone and it kind of gives the wash behind your people a little bit more dimension. So it just gives it like a little bit more interest um, because there's kind of a fade in colors. Sometimes they're lighter, sometimes they're darker in some areas. And it looks really nice. It kind of gives it a, a more um, cohesive look, I think, rather than just going 
straight, like some straight from the paint um, piece. So like sometimes there are, you know, some spots are a little lighter, some are a little orangier, some are a little yellower. Um, but as you can see, if I go over my crayon, you can kind of see that um, it's not uh, ruining my drawing at all. And that's what is really great about using crayon with watercolor is it repels the water. So even if I get close to this face, I don't really have to be too precise and really try and like make sure I do a clean edge because it's really not gonna show up next to that um, crayon there. The crayon is just gonna overpower it. Um, things that are white though, like the shirts and the, um, and the jacket, I kind of have to be careful in those areas because uh, obviously they're just blank paper. So I don't want to get too much color on there. I like to, I kind of had to skip around a little bit, but I try and kind of keep moving with my colors. Um, if you wait, like let's say you're like, oh, I'm in the middle of this and I gotta go eat something and you finish half your painting, um, you might see a line kind of form in your background. So it's important that you do this step kind of all at the same time and you cover your whole paper with your, um, with your uh, watercolor um, at the same time, just because it, um, be because like I said, there will be a line sometimes in the middle of it um, because the paint has dried. So sometimes the paint will, if you leave it too long, it will dry and create kind of like a layer. So then once you go and put paint next to it or on top of it, it will create a new layer. So um, that's really great if you're wanting to build up the saturation of the color. But if not, and you're just kind of trying to add to the background, um, you really need to make sure that it's all done at the same time. Um, your one layer, you kind of have to do it all one layer at a time. So that's why I'm kind of powering through this and um, doing it all at the same time rather than taking my time. I like to kind of go quickly because it kind of dries quickly. And uh, luckily I don't have to be too precise um, with this project because we're just doing kind of like a background for our image. Um, if you want to, you can also, after you're finished here with the background, There we go, I'm finished So after you're finished with the background, so my whole background is covered, we wanna make sure that it's filled in. You can also start to add more watercolor behind your, your crayon if you want to, because the crayon will repel it, it'll kind of just fill in some of those gaps. Like I can see like in the hair, there's kind of these white splotches. So I might um, add some black to that. So I'm gonna dip it in here and then maybe, oh, that's not black, that's green, weird. Know that that's not black. Maybe this one's black. This is what I should do. Oh, brown. Okay. Well, um, luckily you can kind of pat it off, but that was nice. So I'm going to go here and get this color. So this one next to the blue is brown, whereas the other one is a green for some reason. So I'm going to go and kind of add my brown in here in the hair, kind of fill in those white gaps. if you kind of want to keep painting. <laughs> So I might do the same thing with my chair. I might add, make some colors here with my chair.
Um, so there we go. So you can kind of add some watercolor to wherever you'd like. Um, I kind of just added it to um, some of my pieces, but um, I love how this looks so far. So I'm gonna actually call that good. Um, so you can kind of put your water away. So there we have it. We have used our crayons and our marker, or our crayons, and uh, I used a Sharpie to create my drawing. Kind of of a historical event showing um, something significant that has happened um, in the US, at least in the past year. Um, and then we got to use watercolor to um, fill in the background, which always looks so nice. I love watercolor for background washes because it's like textured and there's some different color in there, but it's um, very soothing and kind of like a great kind of um, backdrop to whatever's happening because we're not as much focused on the background we are focused on these people and what's going on um in this scene so hopefully i succeeded with telling my story of um coronavirus vaccines we'll see hopefully in the next future how this story ends but um there we go our picture um art piece inspired by jacob lawrence and his art this week um thank you everyone i hope you enjoyed this project and i can't wait to see what you came up with thanks everyone bye